filter, the focus. It's like Yeah, you do like, like a fake back, like a green screen background. It looks like you're green screening the background that you actually record from. What's up with that? I don't know, but I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's uh, an attribute <laughs> to my professionalism. It, it looks like I've been watching some NFL games lately and they have this like uh, fuzzy filter that they put on to give it like a whole bunch of depth all of a sudden. Oh, you I can tell it's like it, it's like watching that. the NFL through Snapchat or something. It's probably my phone camera doing that, but I, I actually watched an NFL last night for an NFL. It shows how long I've been doing you watched it. one? I watched it in NFL oh, last NFL? night. It was incredible. A whole, <laughs> almost a whole one. Uh, haven't done that, I think, the entire season. It was the uh, Chiefs and Chargers. They okay. Went, in, went into overtime, and uh, Mahomes panned it in there with the uh, – I've not been following football at all for the last couple of years, like, mm. at all. But – I was at a cigar event last night with my cousin and uh, they have a whole lounge thing and like, you know, TVs on. So at the very end when it was all winding down, everybody was kind of chilling in the lounge and watching the end of the game. So I caught that part of it. That's pretty cool. Was it an actual cigar lounge or your cousin has his own cigar lounge? That would be even cooler. I think he's planning on working on it now that he's, I've kind of got him in to the whole thing. Like he's way into it now. So yeah. that will probably happen at some point with his garage, but no, this is an actual lounge. They have like a, an event once a month featuring a certain cigar and uh it's pretty cool there was a bunch of people there last night they do like a raffle they do uh you know they have us like arturo fuente was there last night they're like showcasing some of their cigars and then oh so every... they actually bring like the makers in um it's the, the it's re reps it. it's reps but the yeah there's yeah. reps that come in for the companies that's cool um, yeah it's pretty sweet and then there's like you know there's dinner and everybody's hangs out. i bring like Everybody loves me when I go because I, I bring like a 12 pack of whiskey of different kinds of whiskey and just put them up on the bar and be like, help yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pour away. <laughs> well, you know, I, I play uh, poker over at Blake Stewart's house every now and again, uh, as much as I can afford to lose. And man, he killed me this last night, took all my money. But um, we, uh, he, he went, the guy was like, you know, born with a horseshoe up his butt or something, the luckiest son of a gun he went to some charity event and he won this whiskey sampler thing so he got like i think he says a 48 bottles of super rare whiskeys you know what i mean so he has all of them out they're pretty cool i was just happy because he had some eagle rare there nice so, but <laughs> yeah we yeah, had eagle rare there last night too i had one of the store picks out there for people to drink everybody the blanton's was full and then had a, a lot of other bottles that weren't full the blanton's was the first one to go just oh, like there you go. people are just all about it, I guess it was, it was empty, like yeah. halfway through the night. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, he had a, yeah, he had a good mix. It's funny. Some of the more popular ones are not necessarily like rare or expensive. They're just ones that like, apparently I don't know anything about this one. Sazerac rye. Baby Saz. Yep. Yeah. So that's, I mean, he sent me home with that one. He said, apparently we can't get that one out here either. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's another Buffalo Trace. So that's the same company that makes Eagle Rare. Makes oh really? Yeah, yeah. The, Sazerac is the parent company that owns Buffalo Trace, um, and yeah, Baby Saz is one of their Wellers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Weller, all that. Yeah. Pat Pappy, that's all under. Yeah, yeah, oh. man. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good. Whiskey's been fun. But I'm not having any. Today. I mean, it's it's just barely past noon here. Uh, we went pretty good last night. Like the event was supposed to be over at eight last night. But one of the guys that works there is a, a pastor. And so I wanted to start having a conversation with him and my cousin. And so we ended up sitting there talking for like three hours. Well, and, it's five uh, o'clock somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Right here. It's only I, three. I could. I mean, I think there's, <laughs> I think I purposely, I think there's no way, well, maybe not purposely, but I don't. Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. Hold on. I just wanted to give our listeners that nice boom opening uh, sound there. So. You know, we'll we'll go with the Sazerac rye. Of course, there's just a random bottle of whiskey sitting down here in the snake room. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Jack Jack Daniels Sinatra Select. Oh, I've seen that one before. That's kind of a weird thing. Like, a, a, I guess it was Frank Sinatra's favorite drink. Was, like, his go-to was Jack. Yeah, he so kind of started running it. He, before companies started sponsoring musicians and stuff like that, I think, I think Sinatra kind of was sponsored by jack jack was getting the benefit of him 
repping their whiskey without him getting the benefit of Jack Daniels, I think. But yeah, he kind of <laughs> put, he kind of put them on a map in a big way. Jack Daniels is actually the uh, sells the most whiskey of anywhere in the world, I think. Uh, uh, definitely the yeah, United States, it. but but probably the world. Um, I, I believe it. Yeah. In this bottle, I was, I was a Bevmo, and they had this bottle. It's usually like 150 msrp and you'll see it places for like 200 bucks but they it was like they had it 50 dollars under msrp at bevmo like some kind of sale i was like well and so it's also a liter it's not a 750 so you can see it's freaking huge yeah i don't know that i'm going to open it i really shouldn't (laughs) (laughs) oh how you been man it's been a little while i thought you were gonna come out to pennsylvania for this one well i would i would like to dude it seems like we sat here and talked like a few days ago. That's what it feels like. I mean, it Just feels like it was we rolled from one like recording from the other end of the country to the next one or what? That could be part. No, it just feels like we had this call last week. Just I think just how much I've been going and how like how every day has just been like full, full, full uh, go, go, go. I, but I've been great. It's been great. Are you, are you wearing a snakes in the fat man shirt on our podcast? <laughs> I, <laughs> that's funny. It's good I, podcast. Uh, yeah, I was on it the other night when I was driving. That's how full it was. So I went to I went to Freedom Breeder. This was oh man. If I if this was yesterday, that's insane. No, there's no way that was yesterday. Day before yesterday. What is it today? Today's Friday. Friday. We're, this is the first time that we are recording and releasing the podcast on the same day. We were supposed to do it yesterday, but you said well, you were, we're too busy. I, oh, yeah, it ended up being pretty busy. It's a good thing I didn't because I, I needed to upload this Freedom Breeder video for the ProLine racks and the build, mm. and it was a much longer one than it, they usually are. So it took, like, extra time to render and export and upload and get all that going. There's no, And I would have needed my computer to do this, so there's no way we would have been able to pull it off, um, especially with that event last night. Like, it's busy with stuff that I'm, like, work. And also fun and kids and puppy and snakes. And like, it's just a, but it's always full. So like Thursday, was that Thursday? What? Okay. Yesterday was Thursday. Wednesday morning, I got up, hit the gym, went to uh, pick up the rental car from the rental car place. Cause we're still doing the one car thing, which is great. Um, it, like, <laughs> literally, no, it's, it's literally great. It's fantastic. Okay. Um, you've done it before though when you sold your you still have that tundra you sold it's that it's been and, since yes, then sir. it's been since then so oh, march, okay. since march 2020 no yeah. since march 2020 we've been a one family or one one vehicle family <clears throat> and it's really been great as far as like kind of making us more cohesive as far as like well, we need to be together a lot more um just from a uh logistical standpoint which is fantastic um but my point is, so I got the rental car and it's great to get the rental car too, because I don't have to worry about it. I just get a rental car, drive it to Freedom Breeder. You don't have to worry about anything happening to it. Get the damage waiver. It's just like, and they always have the adaptive cruise control where I, the car basically drives. I itself. do that all the time. Even when I have a car now, right. like if I'm making a big run out to go get a thousand pounds of feeders, I just rent something. It's, I don't know. It, it works out right now. Like rental prices are all over the place, but if you can find normal pricing. Yeah. You know, and the girl, the girls over at the enterprise here, like they all, they all know me and they take good care of me. They let me like drop the car off here in town and they'll come pick it up for me. Um, mm. So well, I, I drove, so I got, got the car, I got up, went up there and then we recorded that video and a few other videos, got all that done, jumped back in the car, drove back here and stopped at a gas station to be on the snakes and the fat man podcast. That's not where I'm wearing this shirt. This was just next. Actually, I wasn't wearing this you shirt. Didn't take, on... You didn't change the shirt two days ago. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't wearing this shirt on his podcast. I just, it was in the next one in my stack of shirts today. So <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of funny like that. Yeah. I, are you like me? I, I, so all during the week, I mean, I have my dress code, right? Like we got a staff, got to wear the reach out reptile shirts during the week. Cause we film stuff and you don't know if you're going to pick up where you left off in a video from three days ago or whatever. So you always want to wear the same shirt. So I just make everyone wear these shirts, but if it's during the week, no choice, you're picking up a reach out reptile on the weekends. I have my choice of any one of 45 different reptile related shirts. <laughs> right. And I tried to go to like a normal, it was like a funeral or something the other day. I was like, I only have reptile shirts now. I don't, I don't have anything else anymore. You know, I was just like, Oh man. I have so many shirts. I mean, I don't know if you saw, I, my mom made a, a quilt 
for the US ARC auction out of some of the old reptile shirts that I have. And that uh, was a while ago, right? It was, yeah, back in uh, September. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty good one. It's because I, I have so many, like you said, they don't even fit in my drawer. So, like, I've got kind of no, a rule. Me too. Like, if it's, I, if it's I just somebody them. sent me one, then I'll just like, uh, if it's not somebody I'm like really good friends with, or if the shirt's uncomfortable, I'll at least wear it once and try to make a point of like taking a picture with it at least, or taking a video. And then if it's not comfortable enough, or if I really don't know the person, then I'll take their shirt and put it up in the closet somewhere to potentially be part of a quilt someday. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, well, next time you do it and you need some more ammunition, let me know I'll, or I'll pack some up next time I come to California to bring a suitcase of them full. But you know, that's a good point. There's a lot of people <laughs> that uh what are you laughing about i was just laughing about the idea of having more shirts brought here <laughs> just so you can have no, it sounds ridiculous like, reptile yeah, shirt thanks you, you could get so many that instead of like grabbing the logo off each one you could like splice letters and write messages like you know like the, the the creepy stalker one from uh what was it bodyguard remember the movie bodyguard anyway my, my front uh, sorry my buddy's uh my buddy one day took my friend's band sticker they had a band called insidious and he took their sticker and cut it up so that it said slayer instead <laughs> <laughs> you should do that on the next cusco and cut and see if anyone even notices <laughs> just chop up someone's stickers and make them say something else <laughs> but you know it's a good point like i get a lot of stuff you probably get the same thing um from people that are like you know maybe beginning breeders or or whatever. I get a lot of calls where people are like, I don't have anything to say. I just want to kind of network and I'm trying to get my name out there and tell people who I am and stuff. Um, and there's good ways and bad ways to do that. Because if you call me when I'm super busy and you're like, hey, I just kind of want to BS so that you know who I am. I'm like, okay, I remember you're that annoying guy that was interrupting me and wouldn't get off the phone so I could get back to work. Or you can do it in the way where you're like, some people are awesome. Like I, I remember I said something about... I don't even remember what platform it was, but I said something about, I like be vegan beef, jer or not beef, but jerky, you know, cause jerky is always good. I, I don't know that it necessarily matters the species, you know what I mean? There's, you can, you can get any kind of animal jerky and if it's done well, it's good. And then they make all kinds of plant-based ones. So anyway, somebody sent me a big package and they're like, I'm not vegan. I think that stuff's crap. But the, I asked all the vegans in town, I this is apparently the best jerky for in miles around. So they sent me some, you know, I had one guy, I think this was from our vegan podcast. jerky, vegan jerky. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, my point is they, they put their card in there and their sticker and everything. And then you're like, Oh, dang, nice. You know, cause they put a little effort into it, I guess, instead of just saying, Hey, give me your time. Give me your mental energy. Give me, give me, give me, I want to be somebody someday you know what i'm saying i'm saying this really like in a rude blunt way because this is not like a pet peeve of mine or anything i'm just saying that for those listening that are trying to get their word out there if you have something to offer somebody they're going to welcome you in oh like, it's definitely a pet peeve of mine when somebody just comes and wants to like take 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 like oh you built this great platform can you please like hmm. share my gofundme so i can get money from it it's like what right well, and especially if they're um, they're trying to take from you to promote themselves and they're not willing to give anything back or, or you know what I mean? Like they just don't care about you. They just see that you're in whatever crowd or doing whatever thing or established some way that they want to be and, and they're trying to, you know, like uh, parasitize you, yes. I suppose. But there's a, a total other thing where people like support their favorite... Uh, you know, creators and stuff like that. And, you know, and they're, and they're yeah, just awesome. being great people and you get to know them. Like both of us have great Patreon communities that way. You for triple B me for reach out reptiles. Like, you know, the people that are on there just want to help, you know, they just want to hang out and they support and stuff like that. So those are great. We said one, I remember some, some of the links that people go to, this was now like a year and a half ago. I'm still talking about it. So to make my point, on this podcast, we talked about like, so I'm kind of vegan, whatever. I like how Kevin says cheat and vegan or whatever, but I, I still am down for like hunted or fished or naturally sourced food like that. Um, and we were talking about that on our podcast. And I said on my bucket list, I would love to go fishing for salmon in Alaska and just do like the cookout on the shore thing, you know, kind of like I used to do when I live in Minnesota, but with salmon <laughs> running up a river you know what i mean instead of a perch or whatever 
So, uh, and then this guy was like, oh, I'm going out to do that this weekend. And so he smoked a bunch of it. So he had like hot smoked salmon, he vacuum packed it and he sent us a ton of it. I mean, it was probably like five pounds nice. of smoked salmon or something. I, and, and fortunately, like all of my employees are weenies and they're like, oh, that's got skin on it. You know what I mean? And I was, so it was more for me. I was like, yeah, you know, it's the best part. <laughs> I just, I, you can't fix some of these guys, you know, so, so. <laughs> I love you style. Oh, crazy. oh man. Uh, dude, speaking of crazy, like I was just sitting down here getting this set up and junior pops one of the sliding panels off of his enclosure, just like, pop hits the ground i was like what They're like was plexi that? or acrylic or something. yeah it's acrylic not and glass it, not yeah. glass yeah. no but i was like oh my god because i think we I, talked about this we did talk about this last time and i've talked about it a little more recently too on our on the uh, live stream the other night that i think we are after this discussion i had with noah noah's a great person for me to talk to my son noah um i, about, I know i know I know you know who I'm now I'm doing that thing. Con, where you know, you're doing the thing that I always do. And yes. you always correct me. Yes. Fun to <laughs> be on the other side of that. Go ahead. So you and your son, Noah, <laughs> yeah. or as I know him, the caramel kid. But right. Anyway. Right. Dude. He looked super caramel the other day, by the way, he's like wearing <laughs> well, caramel colored shirt, Look, caramel pants. I'm more like, Neapolitan than ever. Look at <laughs> yeah, this. I, I got that. my chocolate, oh, it, my dude. strawberry and my uh, vanilla right there. That's why we gave each other those nicknames. Anyway, right. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, we had a kind of deep discussion as he and I do from time to time, um, uh, about, you know, breeding the snakes and like not wanting to just have a, a huge clutch and sending snakes out into the ether, hoping that whoever happens to get them will take care of them. And that, that, mm. that being the reason I'd never move forward with breeding retics, even though it was a plan when I got them originally. Now um, I'm following you. And I was like, I don't remember taking any of this, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, and junior popping out this morning as I was sitting here, it was kind of like, it's just another sign of like, I think I'm going to put him in with Halo. Like I've basically made up my mind at this point that I'm going to put him in with Halo. You let them decide. If you're uh, horny enough to bust out your enclosure, I'll give you a date. <laughs> yeah. Sucks for and, all of you with the glass sliders, only the plexi guys. Can do that. <laughs> so I'm thinking that uh, like, to be fair, because the reason that we definitely want to do it, we would like to, we'd love for some people to get, offspring from junior and halo because they're both awesome retics like just personality wise and you know they've got they're kind of made for each other you know junior being a golden child motley uh head albino and halo being a lavender motley tiger um i'm sure be cool hey titanium too yeah be cool pairing but um we're not but it's also just to let them do their thing and it's not necessarily about trying to get like whatever the highest morph of is it and and noah's noah's hold back was like i don't want I told him the different options. I gave him like, there's three options. Option one is we just don't breed them. There's nothing to worry about there with babies. Option okay. two, we get the eggs and we feed off the amount of eggs that we haven't found responsible homes for. Option three is we wait for them to hatch. And so we can feed off snakes potentially, you know, or, and then we'll know what we have. And we are fired. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. You are not pretty enough. Yeah, right. So we were like that. He's like, that's not, that doesn't seem right at all. I was like, well, you're right. It's not. Right. Thank That's you, me. Noah. That's uh, yeah. Anyway, all right. I was about to rant, but I'm not going to because I've done it before. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So we decided we're just we're not going to know what you know the genetics are. We're before the animals even have a chance to you know really feel. Um, we're going to feed the eggs off. So uh, and then just have however many. Like I said, we'll we'll get a hold of people, see who we know that is responsible and wants one. And then we'll keep that many eggs. And then if some of them don't make it, oh, then some of them don't make it. And maybe not everybody gets one that wanted one. But yeah. that's, I think, going to be the plan. Interesting. I saw um, like a thumbnail of yours or whatever that was talking about culling snakes. Is that's, that what you were talking about? Yeah, we had that conversation there, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, it's a controversial one. On my last live stream, we talked about the idea of spay neuter for snakes too. And if that hmm. was available what would that mean to the industry? Yeah, because we talked kind about of a fun here. one too. Yeah. yeah. I like those kinds of topics. But I'll tell you what's uh, fun over here in snake world um, is uh, we got our first African house snakes hatched out. Nice. 
they're like earthworms. They're so <laughs> small. They're like this little strap to my mask. This is like about three inches longer than a newborn house snake. You know, they're they're so tiny. Aiden just fed them for the first time, and he's like, "What are we gonna feed these things?" Because we're breeding African softwares, and we looked at like day old pinkies, and we're like, "No, that it would explode." One of these things. So what I did was I, I pulled a bunch of like mice out that I was going to feed other stuff and, and clip their, you know, frozen thawed, of course, and then clip their tails off. And I told Aiden, watch this. This is cool how they do this. Cause I've bred some South African little colubrids before that are similar. They're called tiger snakes. Um, they're really neat, but uh, I haven't actually even seen any since I got out of them, which I hate when that happens. It's like somebody carry the torch. I can't do it all. Um, but <laughs> I'm serious. Like everyone keeps going to these like mainstream or trending animals. Anyway, um, it's kind of neat. I clipped all the tails off of them and we just took the hashtag stump. super dwarfs. Sorry. Says, <laughs> I mean, Wiccan's wicked reptiles says is one of the rising stars for 2020. So right. No, I, I'm snake. giving you crap. Obviously you there, they are on the map. I would say mostly because of you and your work so he didn't shout me out in the video but he did what? use all all my footage he didn't even put <laughs> what he didn't put like a little thing that said the footage from reach out reptiles uh, I, guarantee I, he did that. I mean it, it says reach out i mean oh, okay. i don't remember it i mean it's obvious that's all i think he, just, he always he always puts a little a little notation down where who, oh where yeah i'm from. i'm just messing because he's our buddy <laughs> but but at any rate oh um, dude did you see i i, I hate cutting you off because i hate it when you do it to me but did you see his did you see his Costa Rica trip, Karma. dude? The video from his Costa Rica. I saw trip? some of them. Yeah, because well, he put a bunch out. Yeah. Does that, that make that, you the jealous? Initial one. The initial one. No, it made me proud. I think, I, of, I think that's I, the one I saw. Yeah. Yeah. No, it made me proud because of the of the production quality. And I know he really liked it. Oh, and it's all, way outside of his way outside like, of his realm. Top of, five, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it was so well done. I I yeah. was just I was super proud of him for it. I was like, oh, look, it's like Dave Kaufman, but small <laughs> with no hair. Sorry. Oh, Dave just sent me a text message. I don't know. What, was um, yeah. what uh, were you saying, though, about the, the house snakes? Breeding? <laughs> but you take the little tail, you take the little stump and you like push it on their mouth and then they just go nom, 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 and they gobble it up. So like when everyone when we hatched these, everyone around here was like, what are we going to do? We're not that force feed these things because you've heard that they're difficult to get started or, or something like that. And I was like, no, 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 no. So like they, they gobble like a, like hog like nose an indigo or snake. indigo snake. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So you just push it in their mouth. These have never eaten before. And so, you know, you can try to throw some stuff in there. We just didn't have anything small enough, but a mouse tail is free because you're feeding the mice to other stuff. So second, they're big enough, they'll get something else. Or maybe we can do a quail foot or some other grotesque thing to feed them but they're they're so funny to me because they're squirmy as all get out and you just hold them in your hand and you go and put the food on their face and then they sit at it for like one two seconds like hmm, what's this and then they just go blah, 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 and they eat it up <laughs> and they're like oh that was easy it's literally almost easier than just tong feeding babies as you go through a rack you just pick it up and go you know stick it in there so everyone's like, wow, these are great. So it's pretty fun. That sounds but, fun. Yeah. So anyway, if you guys want another species, let me know. I'm going to shoot myself in the foot here because now everyone's going to call me. They got wild house snakes. But I'm just uh, breeding them to, these are like het for everything uh, kind of house snakes. You know, I, I didn't, I don't, I don't need as many. And I got three more clutches in the incubator. And so I have extras. Um, I have an avenue already preset to sell and get the babies to good homes. Cause just like you were talking about, definitely something you want to think about in advance. So I can send as many house snakes that way as I want. But in the meantime, if you guys want a pair of house snakes that are like pos had everything, cause all their morphs are recessive right now. I've, I've got some cool ones. So they're literally off of my most expensive pair of house snakes. So Wow, kind of like bull snakes or something, huh? Everything's like recessive. Yeah, honestly, most species are like that. There's very few like codom, and and then typically when you do get codoms, they're the wonky ones, like jag carpets or like the the lily white cresteds. You know, they're they always mm -hmm. have like neuro things, and so I, I mean. The, the more popular a species becomes, the more stuff pops out like that. 
but I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but most of the stuff I've noticed when you have traditional stuff like albino or genetic stripe, they typically don't have any real issues, you know, but they're always recessive too. So all the house snake morphs, as far as I know, there's no issues with them whatsoever. But then when you get the, the codom stuff, they get like weird issues, you know? Now you're saying like incomplete dominant? Yeah. All right. I was just, I was just checking. <laughs> I remember the first time you came over to my house, you were like, you were like, you went on a rant about, about a video I put out that you like ranted at me, like We're calling like, stuff like, codom. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. talking about others saying like, you don't, don't tell me how to, how to like, well, I don't remember what it was. I don't remember the word for word stuff. But oh, I just, <laughs> I, it was, I mean, it, that's another it was like, one of the reptile like industry. You, the way that you were ranting about it was like, you were ranting to somebody else about my video but you're ranting to me about it <laughs> gossiping to you about how much you drive me crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah was... sounds like that's right that's my style oh i wouldn't say it behind your back you know, rant so to you about you. <laughs> i just remember thinking about it because it sounded like the way you were talking or maybe it was just my own perspective it was like it just sounded like you're ranting to somebody else about me, but it just happened to be to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it's probably exactly the opposite topic of like what I'm saying now, but I'm going to do the, the rant from the other side, devil's advocate when I guess, but like the, the way that everyone in the reptile industry thinks they're a scientist and they like to correct each other. Like the classic one would be like, it's not poisonous, it's venomous. And you're like, well, whatever. Can't change a hundred years of history that quick, doofus. And you knew what I meant anyway. So, you know what I mean? You weren't concerned when I said that I saw a poisonous snake that I was going to be eating said snake or whatever. You knew what I meant. So just back off. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like stuff like codom, I actually incomplete dom is usually the way I say it, but you grew up saying codom and you don't switch it, you know. Is and, it like and, uh, like Kleenex? Like it's 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 a instead brand. of a tissue. Right. Yeah, kind of. Like I mean, it just comes to mean something, and I, I think that that's okay, you know. And it actually sort of like ties you to something, you know. Yeah, we, I guess we it's, actually if it's not hurting anybody, you know. I mean, that's I guess whether are you, you can really get into the weeds with some of this stuff for sure. Well, some of it's bad. We actually talked about this on um, the last video I did was about Kalatoas. And we said like some people use Kalatoa and, and Superdorf synonymously. And that's bad because if you were to call it Kalatoa Superdorf, that's fine. That's accurate. But if someone sells you something as a Superdorf and then you assume and label it as a Kalatoa, hmm you're going to screw stuff up. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I brought up the point. It's kind of like saying, go Google it. You know, like I I'm, I'm saying when I say Google it, you know, that I mean to search for something on the internet, it could be Bing, it could be Yahoo, it could be, you know, Chrome, whatever. But uh, you know, we, we say Google it and the, the company names become the name. And every time someone corrects me on something, I ask them how they pronounce Burmese Python from Myanmar. You know what I mean? Because Burma doesn't exist anymore. So quit calling it a Burmese Python if you're going to do that. You do it too. You do it too. But I know what you meant. I wasn't an a-hole about it. How do you pronounce it? Brog Hammeris. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's another good one. That's a controversial one. Hmm. Not really, though. No. Uh, yeah, no. But I find controversial topics they're i feel like they're becoming less which is nice i'm just what? all over <laughs> are you crazy i guess i feel like every time there's a new conversation it brings up a new controversial topic well i guess maybe i'm um, thinking that there's there's so many it's like it's getting to the point where like it's almost ridiculous like what is considered controversial at this point where it's like it's at that breaking point where it's going to be like it's just ridiculous. This is ridiculous that this is even a controversial subject. Like it's, that it's, is the one thing, no matter what side of any argument you could be talking about, left versus right, or should you be vaccinated, or you you know, and like these violently con controversial conversations. And the one place everyone can find middle ground is, oh my god, this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is too much. We're all too much. We just need to relax a little bit. Oh yeah. man, that's why I sat in this chair today, dude. I don't know if you can see this thing, but it's it's big. I've been shopping for a new chair. Oh um, man, 
I found this thing at a at an antique store down the street from the whiskey shop I go to. Oh, in cool! Paso. What's it look like on the bottom? Does it have rollers or it's is got it a legs? It's like a it's a it's not legs. It's got a uh, a circular. It's got like a hula hoop base, a metal hula hoop. Yeah, that it that rest. stands on. Here, I'll just I'll so it's like a bar up. stool. Yeah, but like, but it doesn't. It's not on wheels. It doesn't slide. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. That's not what I was expecting. Yeah, that's like a lazy Susan underneath your chair. So no wheels, just sets and spins. I like that. Yeah, it's super chill, dude. I went into that place. I went to the shop, walked around, check it out. It was super cool. Awesome shop with a cool couple that owns it. And they were playing our um, first dance wedding song. And then when I walked in, so I just walked in all in a good mood and went and sat in this chair. And I was just like... <laughs> That's how they get you. They play your wedding song for everyone that walks in. That's good marketing. <laughs> and there was a couple in there that it was makes like, you want to commit. <laughs> yeah. And there's this other couple in there that was like the, the song. And I was, I was like, this is a great song. They're like, yeah, this, this is great. This is our song. I was like, wow. <laughs> well, this is my chair. <laughs> yeah. So I've been, I've been uh, shopping and I'm trying to do this interior design wear that hat and it's not working and my problem is you know this it's like the whiskey it's like the cigars it's just not worth drinking garbage stuff you know because you and i i think are in the same that if, you, if you're drinking some whiskey you're not drinking it to get drunk Definitely almost not. never oh uh, right? pretty much never in fact i wish that i could drink more of it without getting drunk just because i me love me too yeah. yes so it's like yeah it's like wanting to drink a milkshake and not get full or fat right totally so you just want the flavor of it. So 100%. I'm the same way with everything. So I had to buy some furniture for this new shop. And I started with a couch. Well, of course, I can't just go to like a furniture store, like a normal person and look at couches and buy one. I have to first sit down and think, what does this couch say about me as a person? <laughs> what couch reflects the message of my soul. And the answer to that, no matter who you are, is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a set of couches. I, I have a picture of it here for those of you guys that are watching on YouTube. It's, it's oh, that called, looks nice. It's a Chesterfield leather couch. It's, it's built and imported in Germany. You pick your, or I'm sorry, in England. And then you, you pick your, you know, they may use all hardwoods and they go into how they build the frame and you choose your leather option. Dude, I'll expensive. tell you, I've been lucking out on stuff like that recently, like in the past few days. Well, starting with this but chair. The chair looks like, yeah, it looks kind of like that. You Dude, know? this thing was 50 bucks. I walked in, uh, like they didn't have a price tag on, I don't think. I think I walked in, I was like, well, how much is it? I was like, oh, what? I was like, here, take the money. I'll come back with something that I can pick it up in. And, um, like I went to go try and find another one of these to have a matching set so we could sit out in the garage and smoke cigars. And like, I'm not the only comfy one. Whatever people are sitting in office chairs. Yeah. Um, and they were like 450, 500 bucks for something. Yeah. That would match this. That's the problem. So, all right. So this is the journey I've been on a bit. I ordered these ridiculously expensive couches. And the funny thing for me is I I'm completely just narcissistic and egotistical and I'm all about image not practicality. I would literally sit on, I think I have one in here. Nope. My wife organized my desk for me. Wait, wait, wait. What, what did you, can you repeat the last five sentences or four sentences? Can you say that one more time? You are what? <laughs> Narcissistic and egotistical. And what, and that means that you image and you, what? yeah. So, well, I was trying to finish this. Sometimes my sentences bounce, bounce back uh, and forth. My English just, teacher in high school told me that she's like, your sentences are longer than most people's whole report. You know that, right? So they're, they're structured correctly, but you have to wait to the end or they don't make sense. It's kind of like watching one of those movies where they show you different splices of a timeline. Well, when we sat here in this room <laughs> and did this podcast for the first time, I think it was, you were totally happy to drink the whiskey out of a snake deli cup. So I'm, oh, I'm okay I, with that. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. No, don't get me wrong. Here's my thing. So what I was going to say in my sentence is the nice couches I'm buying for people who visit. There's a place where they visit. They're going to go sit there. I'll sit on a metal folding chair. 
You get you get what I'm saying? Like, okay. so if I were to say, hey, we're going to set up a little bar here at Reach Out Reptiles, as funny as I think it would be to offer people drinks and deli cups, I would probably go buy some ridiculously fancy cup that reflects the message of our soul around here. Expensive, right? <laughs> so now that I bought the couch, I needed a little chair for our receptionist area. And now I need a chair for here because we're going to eventually set this office up for like YouTube. So if no one was looking, I would just stand up. <laughs> you know what I mean? But once people are looking, you're like, ah, now it's got to match, you know? So I bought these, this chair that I found at like a vintage shop or whatever. And then of course, when you find them, I'm like, I might need a matching one later. Wow. This reflection is, it's like a, it's like a bar stool with a low back. Yeah. Low back bar stool, but see the, like the leather and the metal. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It looks very much like our trade show booth. You're familiar with how that looks. Mm. So they had two of them and I'm like, I knew like with your chair, like I'm never going to be able to match this. I only need one. They're like $350 for those stupid bar stools, but I bought two because I needed one and it, ha it matched. And then it, they had a second one, they're vintage. So I had to like, you know, get it. So now I'm on this hunt for like a Chesterfield high back chair for this room, just so that when I sit back and I do an interview in a video, it'll match the experience that customers have when they walk through the door. Well, I'm going to give you they're the like twenty five hundred bucks. If I get I'm going to give one. you the same energy that I got yesterday, I'm going to pass it on. <laughs> God, please take that and give it to Garrett like I got yesterday. <laughs> uh, I've been I've been wanting to get this particular bottle of Jack Daniels. It's called Koi Hill. It's like a it's a limited yeah. release, one of their yearly limited releases from their one of their their warehouses that's up on the highest part of the property of Jack Daniels and way up in the top of the warehouse. It's like 144 proof, like intense flavors all the reviews i've seen people are like this is like angels like dancing in my mouth like like these type <laughs> of reviews i'm like oh man i'm never going to see one of those bottles just because it, it's it's a 70 dollar msrp bottle and it's just another one of those, i mean you know you pa pa pappy's it. like nine 100 yeah. bucks right but it's like two thousand right. dollars and the same thing happened with this almost immediately like it's 70 dollars msrp you start it's seeing new? On second, it's new and you okay, start seeing on answer. secondary markets for like I've seen it when I Google it, like just trying to find it online, prices come up at like $1,000. And I'm just like, I was like I'm just not, fortunately, somebody sent me a sample yesterday, a little uh, like three ounce sample of it. And I didn't taste it yet. No, I didn't taste it yet. Oh. But, but so I got the sample. <laughs> I you were say, fortunately, I hated it. <laughs> no, I got, uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm sure I won't. I don't, well, I can't be 100% sure, but I imagine I won't based on the people that I know that tasted it and like how I know their palates line up with mine kind of. Uh, and I was just kind of gave up on the fact I was happy to get the sample. I was happy that I, somebody was so cool to send me a sample so that I could at least try it. But I, and I just was like, well, that, I, that's great. I got the sample because I've pretty much given up on the idea that I'm ever going to get one of those bottles. And then like an hour after I opened that sample and set it on my, my counter, Matt sends me a screenshot of a place down in Southern California, their Instagram story that says, boom. Koi, bottle of koi hill we've got a few down here and they this this store does really something really cool that a lot of other whiskey shops don't is yeah. that they they will just give you the option they'll give you bundles so a lot of these stores are able to get those allocated bottles because of how much they sell of the other crap that people don't yeah, necessarily right, want right, yeah they're, and so they're being they, rewarded for being a good customer right and so they'll, they'll just bundle that together for their customers and they won't try to like ramp up to some ridiculous price on this bottle even though they know they could probably get it they want to sure. be fair their yeah. customers and they and they so they include a you know this six pack of irish whiskey and you buy that and this bottle and you purchase them together and you then you can get it and it they made a blooper on their thing like they only had that story up for literally 20 minutes must have been up matt screenshotted it because it said in store or online because usually some of the deals are you have to be there in person because they don't want people buying them Ooh, online and flipping them and doing this. Copy and pasted it wrong and you took advantage of it. Well, I called them. I called them. I, I've been there plenty of times. I've, I've met the guys and bought, you know, frequented their store. And I was like, hey, I, the Koi Hill bottle, like, I, I, can I pay for it right now over the phone? They're like, no, it's, it's in store only. I was like, oh, there was a your, your story. Your Instagram story says in store online. And they're like, oh, yeah, that was a typo. We deleted that. <laughs> They, not before they, I saw it. But they still, but it, they're not, they're still not going to go against their, <laughs> their thing. Okay. They're, they're, they're not going to honor that just because it was a, a little typo. They said online, it meant they put only, it just like auto-corrected or something. 
but there was a guy that I met down there named Austin who uh when I left my camera on a plane and I was looking to replace stuff he's just one of those type people like you said people that like follow and really want to support. I mean, he's looking to start his own YouTube channel too at some point, but this is in California. It's not the Austin I know no, that we met no. at CMB. Okay. No, different, different Austin. Okay. Uh, equally as cool, I would say. Um, <laughs> Ooh, but that's he's tough. He said, I know it is tough. It is tough, but they are, <laughs> they are, I, they're both really cool. I, like they both do Austin, the name Austin, like extreme justice. <laughs> uh, so he sent me camera stuff. I went and just like for me to keep, he's like, I'm not using this stuff. Just have it. And I was like, dude like thanks but no as soon as i uh, i knew as soon as i get my camera replaced like i got my stuff you know my new stuff and i was like all right dude i'm bringing your camera stuff back like you want me to ship it like i'm coming down there to visit my family we can meet up somewhere and he's like oh cool that's awesome man and i was like yeah <laughs> it was awesome for you to freaking send it and give it to me in the first place so we met up it just happened to be that where he was and where i was at hillary's grandma's house was that liquor store was halfway between there so we okay. met there to for me to give him his camera stuff back however many months ago. And so I was, and Matt's on the phone. And, and so we're like trying to figure out how we're going to get to this store before they sell those last two bottles they got. Cause they're going to go like that. Mm. And Matt's like, I'll get down there tonight sometime. And I was like, they will be gone by that time, dude. They will be gone by the time you get down there. So I, I was like, who do I know down there? And I was like, Austin, I met Austin at that freaking store. <laughs> I call him. He picks, up on like, he picks up on like the first ring. He's like, what's up dude i was like man go to that, this I address remember, i remember that liquor store we, you money <laughs> no yeah exactly I was, remember that place we <laughs> met the liquor store we met at i was like how, what how, what's the chance that you're close to there and can get there like right now he's like oh i'm like 20 minutes away i was like dude yeah i'll pay you pay i'll give you gas money like i just explained <laughs> to him real quick the situation he went down there and the, he tried to get us too but they only do one per person um but he got it for us and I paid pound some money. And it, so the bottles of Irish whiskey that went with it, here's the thing. So $70 bottle MSRP, right? That people are selling for like thousand dollars. There's, you get six bottles of the Irish whiskey, slain Irish whiskey. And that bottle of Coy Hill, it was one ninety nine. Each of those bottles of slain whiskey are $30 themselves MSRP. So 30 times six, that's 180 bucks. So You're technically for 20 bucks, you got whatever, that bottle yeah. for 20 bucks. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. That's cool. So I'm trying to pass that on. Found a Chesterfield yeah. on Craigslist in the area, but they never contacted me back. So mm. I need to find a vintage leather Chesterfield, like executive chair, you know, like a high back. They're, they're the ones with the, for those that aren't watching, like the, the little uh, buttons those in little them. Buttons yeah, that, the little yeah. riveted buttons that you put in, the, in a dark brown leather. Yeah, it makes it look so That's what cool. I need to find. You know, I'm building like custom desks and all this stuff. It's, it's going a little bit crazy. I can't wait Especially, to visit, dude. Oh, you know what? The longer you wait, the cooler it's getting because we got so much stuff. Yeah, that's I mean, why I'm can, not there right now. You can actually see like designs for builds and stuff in the in the background of this video. But... You know what that one thing looks like above the word museum? That looks like the uh, cage that they put uh, Mad Morgan in. Mad Mortigan in. Remember the movie Willow? And. uh Oh yeah, wasn't that round though? This one's triangle. Uh, yeah, it was kind of roundish. I guess it this was one's not round. even triangle. It's just, I mean, you can't. See <laughs> wait, wait, okay, there. but what is it? <laughs> I can't <laughs> tell you. I haven't told anybody. This, right. this right here. Okay, I'll tell you this. Okay, this is a cage, and this is a floor plan. Okay, I could tell that was a cage. That's, That's all I can I tell you because I haven't mentioned it to anybody yet but it looks like a cage that you those medieval things that you hang people in to make a pretty close of them. it's pretty close and that would totally be on brand for me right <laughs> medieval torture for the snakes you know it's what we do it's what gives them character you know we want we want yinzer snakes going out there born in a life of you know depression and working hard for everything so we're gonna torture them <laughs> Anyway, anyway, oh man. So I'll, I'll tell you what, this is, this is my idea for a dive deep in the shallow end. And it's kind of funny that it sort of ties, ties in with a conversation we've been having a little bit about like shopping and trying to find tough stuff. Who, who is the hardest person in your life to buy a Christmas present for? That's my question. Cause I, I'm, 
I'm a procrastinator. And for me, easy answer. It's my wife. She's like, she's grateful for everything. It's not like she's hard to please or anything like that. But I, I always am like, no, I want to get something really good. And for her, like if she was, if she was just expensive, that would be easy. Hey babe, here's a diamond. You know what I mean? Look how big it is this year. Then (laughs) that would be easy for me. You know what I'm saying? But she's not like that. You know, she, she actually wouldn't appreciate that. She'd be like, why'd you waste money on this? There's so many better things in life. So it makes it very challenging because she's happy with everything, you know? So it makes her really, it's so hard to be like, oh, wow, this is a great gift, honey. And it drives me crazy. I, I end up having to like, nothing is good enough. And I end up having to like make stuff for her. I was shopping online. I was like, I, what I want for her doesn't exist. I'm going to have to make it like this week while Christmas is happening and all this other stuff. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Well, there's, for me, here's, here's the problem. I don't generally buy people Christmas presents unless something speaks to me uh, for that person. Like I see something like, oh, this person will love that. A- and around the Christmas time is the appropriate time to act on that notion. But I generally don't Christmas shop. For I people. like it's been a that. long time. It's been a long time. I, since I like that. that. That's how I would roll too. And what I should do is just do that throughout the year and then wrap it up in Christmas package and hide it somewhere. But the tough thing is now we got what? Uh, Less than a week until Christmas. And I want a present that speaks to me for that person, but I got to force it. That's why she's difficult. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, you got a week and a day. Okay. (laughs) Thanks for correcting me, Mr. Poisonous Venom. No, I was trying to give you more time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was, it, was uh, the, it was a half It'll be full. easier for me to find an office chair than it will be to buy something for my wife that makes her happy. So who is your person? You just saying people know not to be disappointed by you now? Brian's probably not giving me a gift unless it's random. I guess. I mean, I don't think that... I- <laughs> I, I don't want to feed into the corporate, you know, I, we, we, we don't really do the holidays as much as like, we don't, I, we don't I like it's by, just because it's Christmas, you're supposed to buy people stuff, especially now this is my first Christmas as a Christian, like I, I know what it's really about now. It's not about getting people things and stuff. Sure. Right. Um, okay. But uh, that's a great excuse. <laughs> it's a fantastic. It's a reindeer's nose. <laughs> um but i know i've really like hillary does pretty much all of the gift shopping for everybody and it comes from us like you know that she'll like for, for, for such a dad cop out i'm sorry it's that's just a what dad happens dad cop out. i mean ashley does too but that's why i have to buy her something i got i got one person i need to buy for because that person takes care of me on everybody else and what do i do and I don't want to be like, sorry, babe, commercialism. I didn't buy you anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all your hard work for the rest of the family, by the way. H- Hillary Tag off. knows what she wants. Hillary will be like, this is, you know what you could get? She'll, Hillary will literally like give me like what it is that she would like. She makes it super easy. So she's not the person. She's not the me. person. She's not the person at all. She's like probably the easy. She's like, this is what I want. She'll even like sometimes like I... I bought this so you can, it could be from you. <laughs> Hillary is the, you can tell her I said this. Hillary is like the classic wife that makes everybody else jealous in every other way. That's, that's who she is. Anyway, yeah. who's so your person? If I, I mean, dude, I, I have not put any thought into this because I'm not <laughs> buying anybody any presents. I got one person a present uh, a couple of days ago because it was something that spoke to me. And I was like, this person, and it was just happened to be, I was buying one for myself too. And I was like, you know what? I know who that person is, I think. All right. <laughs> Am I right? I don't know. I, you didn't well, it was say a couple of days ago. You just said that your cigar thing, you bought like the store pick uh, Eagle Rare and you told me you were going to go buy me some Eagle Rare a couple of days ago. Is it oh, me? Yeah, I, yeah, but I see. If Is it's that a, who you were if, thinking of? No, it's not. Oh, okay. All right. But Fair yes, enough. to your point, I, I was like, I, <laughs> I've seen, I've done that for you. Remember, I, I, but it's not that, Christmas. It had nothing to do with Christmas. It oh, was, that's okay. Yeah, I like that. I'm just yeah. saying 
there's pressure it's christmas you gotta <laughs> perform no man no i i've always been a, i've always rebelled against like especially when people expect something from me it almost makes me like my my the the part of me that is not humble the part of me that is like gonna rub m my beliefs in your face is the part that says you can't tell me what to do you can't pressure <laughs> me into doing something even so if it's just just to be fair like ashley doesn't expect anything she's wonderful you know what i mean like like if i got a pair of fuzzy socks she'd be happy it the pressure is more for me where it's like you're she making does pressure so, on yourself she does so much for me that there are times of year like Christmas, Valentine's, her birthday anniversary. You feel like you where owe she her. doesn't care about anything, but I'm like, man, I, I love this woman so much. I owe her so much. She does so much more for me than I do for her. You know what I mean? And even if I told her that, she would disagree because she's humble. You know what I'm saying? So That's it's great. like times like this where it's like, man, I just, I want to like knock it out of the park, you know? And I, I, come up blank fair enough fair enough i i you don't have any you you're totally free of that huh you don't care at all it, it's it's not that i don't care it's well maybe it is that no i don't care I, not I don't, the, about the person i mean about the you know the tradition or whatever yeah celebration. no not so much I, I, it's not a big deal to me about like like no it's i don't have that where i like i need to this needs to be this like big special thing for this. There, so here, there was a time when I had lots and lots of disposable income. And I would just basically play fairy to people, whoever wanted, whatever it was they wanted. Like I was that fairy for that person. You know, it's, it's sounding weird as it's coming out of my mouth, the, way, the words I'm choosing, but. <laughs> You're just generous. You easy come, easy go. Yeah, even when I don't like, because I have, I right now I do have a bunch of whiskey. So when I went to that event last night, I pulled stuff off the, I wasn't like, oh, I don't like this stuff. I don't like this stuff. I'm going to take it to give it to people. I was like, I think people like this. I think people would like this. Everybody's having cigars. Some people like this. I brought good stuff and I just yeah. put it on the thing. And there's, you know, like I think 40 or 50 people showed up to this event. And it was the biggest event that they've had that I've been to. Um, and I just put them up on the bar there and just kind of made a loud announcement like, there's whiskey over here. Help yourself. Um, yeah, it's and cool to be that guy. Yeah. I just like it makes it it feels good. It feels good to to do that. And so I don't have any there's no pressure. I don't I don't get myself in a spot where I feel pressured to get somebody something because I I always am finding the moment without with or without Christmas like the, to give like oh this is and even more so more and more as I the older I get the more the better it feels the better like and the more willing I seem to be to be like I want to, I want to give you this almost to the point where like, you know, the, the saying give till it hurts. Like, sure. yeah, like that. I think that's where I'm at. Um, so no, I don't have somebody that I can think of was like, Oh, look at, cause I, if I don't, if I'm not, I don't even, it doesn't cross my mind. It doesn't cross my mind to think about, Oh man, I need to get a gift for this person. What is it going to be? I go into, you know, it probably just means that you have far less of a deficit of owing people <laughs> in the, in the realm of give and take. than I do, yeah, that's what it means. It's, you know, I, I mean, I spend myself entirely all day long on other people and stuff like that, Yeah, I was gonna but say I don't spend myself person. enough on my wife. Mm. That's, you've got, you've got guilt built up huge deficit. So, and the Christmas thing is like, I mean, I've uh, done all kinds of random Christmases. You know what I mean? I've even skipped Christmas and gone to a tropical country where they don't celebrate it and stuff like that on Christmas, you know, which is a, actually a pretty cool experience to like not have it at all. You don't realize, you know, where it does impact you until you've done that. But, um, but for my wife, it's very important. Like, you know, I mean, like I said, she doesn't expect it. And if I get her nothing, she'll love me the same. But if I got her something really special that she wasn't expecting, I put it under the tree and it was just right, that would mean a lot to her. And so that's why it's important to me because she's just much more um, traditional, I guess. You know what I mean? Like she, she enjoys this kind of thing. Like 
her family's that way too. I always thought like, ah, you guys are stupid. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to be together on some magical December 25th to make it whatever. And I've come to appreciate it over time that like their whole family all comes together from all over the place, you know, to spend that time together and they make it, you know, they make it important. We, so. We've done that a lot. This is actually the first year that we're not doing that in probably my entire life. You mean we as in like your mom and dad and that yeah, extended like as our, family? Yeah, as in like in our yeah. entire family, grandma, grandma. Well, I, I guess my grandma will be coming. I just found out to, this morning that my grandma will be coming down this way um, around Christmas time, which is fantastic. But um, for the last 12 years, no, for, like, for, for my entire life, we've, we've gone somewhere to, you know, even if it was in my hometown, we would go to my, my grandma's, which was luckily a mile away but we'd still you know have christmas morning at the house and then we go everybody would meet at my grandma's and we'd spend the day there and then have dinner and even the night before we'd have christmas eve dinner there at her house and when i you know after i got married we'd start swapping like whatever year we would go and have uh thanksgiving down with her with hillary's family we'd go have um christmas with mine that same year and then we would swap the next year and so we were always going somewhere for these past 10 years or whatever to be somewhere and this is the first time we actually stayed home for thanksgiving just us and i invited my neighbor jim because he was going to be by himself and then christmas morning all our plan is at this point is to stay here like we're, we're not going to go anywhere um maybe my cousin's down the street later if, if he's depending on what he's doing but um yeah first year in a long time that, but that's been a big thing for us always too like th thanksgiving and Christmas, like it's, it's been a point to be with as much family as possible on those holidays. That's great. Yeah, that's a great way. To, I mean, that's probably the most important tradition is you're forcing yourself to set aside. I mean, that's still corporate tra tradition, but it's it's based in love and reconnection of your family and investing in each other. So it's a, it's a good tradition. Right. Whoa, this is why I like go. this podcast. Okay. I figured oh. out the present. But go I, ahead. I, okay, good. I'm glad you figured out the present because I just you figured it too. Good. I figured I figured <laughs> out what who it's the hardest to to get for, but but okay. also but and it's not that hard to be fair, but mm -hmm. it is the only one that I actually have to put thought into at times, yeah. which I think we're not doing this year for the first time. Okay. Um we do a game gift. Um we would always play this gift game in the family. Like everybody gets a gift, you know, there's like a price limit or whatever. So people don't get crazy. And, uh, and you go sit in the circle with your gift for the game. And we pass Is it like the, the swap elephant kind of right. Right. Thing? It's kind of like yeah. that. You pass the dice around and you know, roll either a one or a six, you get to pick one out of the pile. And then once you, everybody has one, then you're rolling. And if you get a one or six, you can swap with whoever has what gift you want. And, and then there's a timer set. So it's like, kind of like duck, duck, goose. Um, yeah. Whenever the timer goes off, whatever you have in your hand, that's what you're getting. That's fun. And, uh, and then there's always the after the game's over swapping that still happens. But, um, <laughs> Do you but know finding what something my, that everybody last... would like. So finding something that everybody would want. is yeah. uh, You know what my last one was for a game? I mean, it wasn't that exact same game, but it was like the steal from someone or pick a new gift type of a game. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know what I got? I do. Yeah. 250 Madagascan uh, hissing cockroaches. <laughs> non-reptile people <laughs> freak. it was just this giant vat full of like huge tropical cockroaches it was That's great it ridiculous. got stolen twice but there was like kids in there too and i was like why do you want cockroaches like i'm turning this loose in my mom's room as soon as i get home wow. <laughs> i was like so just if anyone wants to do that and you want people to talk about it for years to come which was always my priority is in cockroaches to about 250 will do <laughs> but why were you saying like 30 seconds ago you're saying that this is why i really like this podcast i i didn't i really like this podcast because what you were talking about uh real i i figured out what i wanted do you want to hear what my thought process was what you wanted to get for Ashley? to get for my wife yeah i have okay. two amazing presents now and well, you I better hope she doesn't listen to this because it's going out today and we still got it one day in a day, week till christmas she won't or if she does she can pretend to be surprised so <laughs> <laughs> um did you know that i started a podcast or i mean a vlog channel have you watched it yeah we talked about it last month Bill. oh okay i didn't know i didn't know 
So it's pretty fun. It's called the reach or whatever. And it's been, it's been really cool for you already do this. Okay. I do remember we talked about this now. You already do this, but it's super fun for me to like watch the stuff after the fact. And you know, what I like is like all of my customers wives is the target audience (laughs) because they're like, I love this because my husband talks about you all the time. I always have to watch reach out reptiles videos, but now I have one that's like, it's you guys and we can watch it together, but because it has little to nothing to do with reptiles, you know what I mean? They just kind of happen to be there. Um, It's more about people. They have a lot more fun with it. That's so yeah, go ahead. That that's what the vlog channel for me had had done from the beginning. I get so many people saying, "Oh, I get thanks for doing this because now I get to you know, like because I got the snakes in there, but mm-hmm. they can get their wives and their families to watch because of the all the family stuff happening." Yeah. See, I have I have the wives uh, like thanking me and stuff, but but for whatever reason in my life and my vlog it reflects a little bit differently than yours. So in your vlog, you, you pop out and Hillary, poor Hillary is in her workout clothes, you know, hitting the bicycle or something and you're filming her too long. And she's like, okay, that's enough. And she's entertaining you. And we all that watch just sit back and think, wow, she's so patient with him. My wife would have punched me in the eye. Um, My wife is a little different. So like the, the perfect quintessential one is uh, when we did the unboxing of the, the new house snakes. Oh, yeah, did we talked about this one? last month, bro. Yeah, okay, okay. So going back to that one, uh, I don't know if we talked about this or not, but seeing like the priorities of where I spend my time and money and all this kind of stuff, everyone's like, wow, you're a jerk. I'm hashtag team Ashley from here on out. <laughs> you know what I mean? You owe that woman. And I've been hearing nothing but that ever since this, this crazy mustache that I'm growing out. I didn't try to do this. I was sick with COVID for two weeks since our last one. And I didn't shave for a while. And then I thought like my kids were asking me about shaving and I was like, let's, let's shave, you know? So I showed them how to shave. I shaved the sides and I had a little goatee going with the mustache. And I was like, there, should I stop here? And they're like, no. So then I shaved my chin and I've got nothing but the mustache and the flavor saver there. And I'm like, hey, should I stop? And they're like, yes, that looks awesome. You look like Bap Bap. And I thought that they were going to make me just shave my whole face and look like a naked chicken until I grew out my soul patch again. But they wanted me to stop with the mustache. So I did. And Ashley's like, well, how come my opinion doesn't count? And the kids count. They don't kiss you as much as I do. And I was like, well, they do now. They kiss me more than you have been since I grew out the mustache. <laughs> Logic. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, hashtag team Ashley. Uh, in that video, the house snake video, I got so many comments about, please buy this wife her kitchen. And we're in the middle of renovating the kitchen. Um, we started about two years ago (laughs) and we got a bunch done and then we stopped really Ashley doesn't care about the kitchen because 10 years ago, I started renovating the rest of the house and I never put any trim up. So I have like new floor going up to the wall with an ugly gap in the middle that all the kids, Legos and gummy bears get stuck in. Oh, that's still there. Yes. Yeah. It's all the same. Uh, around the windows, I put like new, nicely insulated windows, spray foamed them and never put the trim on, you know what I'm saying? So we have like this unfinished feel through the whole house. Cause I'm like, I'm practical. So I get the 90% done that, that is like the, this part matters. And then the part that makes it like look cute. So you can be proud. I don't care about. So I just, I've, I've always, never put the trim around the door in my snake room either. And just think of the point you said. Because why does it matter? It doesn't have to <laughs> exist. It's only for looking good, and I don't care, you know. Unless obviously it's my executive chair, but that's only because someone else has to look at it, and not me. Anyway, the perfect present that I'm going to surprise Ashley with is more than more so than the kitchen. She wants this trim done that's been like even her mom when she comes over, she's like, every time she walks in the door, she's like, Oh, you still haven't done the trim yet, huh? Hmm, okay, I see what kind of son in law you are. It's been and, like that uh, since I was there. It's been like that forever. In the first three <laughs> weeks I bought my house, I renovated the whole thing. I was up every single night renovating this place so that we could move in. And I stopped short of the trim and I never continued. So it's always been that way. 
Um, so, so how are you going to do that as a surprise for Christmas? I, you know what? I'll just get a receipt or an appointment or something, because at this point, like I'm so busy that I won't be able to do the trim for a long time, but I'll just call. I mean, all I have to do is make a phone call. <laughs> I'll make a phone call and I'll hire a contractor and we'll set an appointment for him to put in the trim and it'll all be paid for. She won't even see it. You know what I'm saying? And that will be her Christmas present. And then the second one is very similar to this. And everybody, if you could throw rocks through a, a car speaker or a uh, you know computer screen or whatever, you should just stone me now. I don't have any life insurance. And she's been wanting to me to get life insurance forever. Oh, and I, oh, no. And I always say, take out a life insurance policy, do it. And she's like, no, you do it. You care about your family. You set it all up. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a, just a failure thing that I've never done. And you know what I mean? It's very disappointing to her. And we all agree. I'm probably going to die at any minute. Just give oh, God, who I am. So, and I'm okay with that, but it would be nice to have some life insurance set up to take care of the family. Oh. So I'm going to go, uh, oh gosh, if I say it on a podcast, it turns real. I'm going to go schedule for the trim to be installed. I'm going to drink this Jack Daniels. That's how bad I am. I'm driving you to drinking. And, uh, and then I'm going to, you know, uh, like, cause I have to book, here's why I haven't have life insurance. You know, you want to know why after 12 years, here's of marriage, why you shouldn't. Um, and I'm, this is life not insurance. Ref- this is not a reflection on your, oh, okay. I, I thought you were sighing in disappointment for me not having it. You've got another perspective. It's the opposite perspective. And mm-hmm. to be fair, I don't think that your life would become in danger just because of this thing. Just to be fair, but, <laughs> <You're crazy>. but, <laughs> but <laughs> I've been watching this channel for the last couple months called That Chapter, and it's a true crime type of uh video you know they they go over different true crime actually he just did the guy that i watched just did uh, ben rennick's case um like a couple days oh, ago I, yeah i don't i can't watch that stuff but well, anyways go ahead no i mean that, ben's not yeah, yeah right 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 go ahead um but one of the common running themes because a lot of the a lot of these you know cases it's like you know spousal you know spot what do you call it uh spouse aside i don't know uh, <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about i don't know if there's a word for it but go ahead there is, but it's not spouse Crazy. aside. <laughs> but, spouse aside. <laughs> like, but life insurance always plays a huge, huge role in the fact that they get their spouse off. Uh, it's like a million dollar life insurance policy when we're getting along. I just wanted the money. And uh, uh, so that's that's just where my brain went because of what? you know, you know, my policy on when snakes bite me, like when it's okay. And when it's not okay. Hi, baby girl. Um, I see you over there, cutie pie. Uh, you, you may know this policy. I always say if the snake is sexy enough, it's allowed to bite me. So, you know, if my wife thinks that, you know, however much the life insurance policy is worth and she can pull it off, go for it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shocked. It's sexy not shocked enough. She yeah, can no, kill it, me for a life insurance, but I'm fine with that. All right. All right I don't yeah, think you, she will. She's way too. Uh, no, I don't like, think so either. That's why, no. that's why it's funny that I even bring it up. I don't see it happening, but I don't she, think anybody else ever does either. She's like either. terrified that I would die. Not because of financial things. She's just terrified that I would die because she's like, I don't know what I would do. You know, well, she had a couple million dollars could probably figure it out. <laughs> She's not as creative as you and I. I'll tell you what, if I die and she ends up with a couple million bucks, give her a phone call. Tell her what to do. She'll need some help with that. Anyway, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. I, I just, I mean, this is, a, I mean, this is serious, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you the truth. I just realized on this podcast, the biggest thing I could do for my wife is get some stupid, like she just needs like baseboard. Don't trim. you dare call it stupid, Hartle. I know, but that's, I mean, all right. Okay, you're right. That's okay, honey. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't look. Yeah, what? Well, all right. Baseboard trim of the ever important final crowning jewel of any house is the baseboard and window trim. Speaking of crown, is it going to be crown holding? 
I, I think she has like crown molding and plans for a couple of the rooms okay. only where it counts. Like, yeah. you know, you got the kitchen counter uh, cabinets that go up to the ceiling. You want to like put molding around them, totally. but I don't think like in all of it, well, which I'm is glad. unfortunate because here in Pittsburgh, we have a lot of cool molding in a lot of these old houses that are like mm. hundred plus years old, but they got like 12 inch molding and then like eight layers. And part of the reason I've never done it, I was always like, <laughs> again, that's really cool. So I go to like these old construction, like where they tear out stuff and you can get refurbished things. And I've never found enough cool molding to do my whole house. And my wife's like, stop looking for that. I want like one by threes put in, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like put something in, stop looking for cool stuff. And I'm like, nah. Well, I'm glad I could help you figure out your uh, the <laughs> biggest dilemma that you're having this month. So yeah. that was a pretty like... deep dive in that shallow end. We oh, were yeah. it from spouse aside to yeah, you correcting me that it's not stupid molding hard hole. <laughs> <laughs> that was good stuff. <laughs> what is the oh. word for it? Now, now I want to know so that I can. You're going to have to Google it. I'm sure you will. What's your favorite uh, animal these days that you have? Pet wise, spousal um, merit aside, I think it is merit aside. That's worse than spouse aside. It's I liked your word better. <laughs> it is merit aside is the uh, killing of one's own husband or boyfriend. But if it's they, there's a different word for if, uh, if the wife gets killed. So uh, my my that's not walking. gender neutral enough for today. Come it, on. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Right when I said that, Hillary walked in the room. That's funny. <laughs> well, I nothing. What? Oh, you good? I guess our I guess our I guess our dog I guess our dog just uh, escaped into the neighbor's yard and she had to, she came in and she looked she came and looked like she'd been riding the exercise bike for the last hour. <laughs> to wrestling the dog. Tell her I said hi. Oh, I will when she when I go back out there. Um, Dagnabbit. Sorry, I missed your opportunity. Sorry, but well, it was just funny that the moment that I said, <laughs> "When you kill your wife," and she was walking, yes. opening the door. And she walked. In. This is what it's called when you kill your wife. <laughs> oh, I don't know why either of them are married to. Uh, yeah, I said that Hillary's the one that makes every other husband jealous. Like, how did he end up with such a gem? Ashley's the same way, dude. It's like what. <laughs> Why do either of them put up with us? It doesn't make any. We have different sets of problems, I think, but we're both equally as bad. Yeah, you might you might be right about Dude, that. I, I every time I come to your house, I'm like, wow, Hillary is probably one of the most amazing people I've ever met in every way. Why is she with this guy? <laughs> you know, to and be just fair, so you know how true that fact is, the last time I was hanging out with uh, Dave Kaufman, he brought it up and said the same thing. And I was like, I know, right? It takes a special person to spend any extended amount of time with me. That's why we're friends. You actually, you're one of the, one of those rare people. I can never that, get enough. Yeah. Easy, one, too one easy. Of those, one of those rare people that, uh, that like, there's like nobody ever spends, I have people come visit me when I live in Hawaii a lot, you know, like friends would come out and visit and they'd be ready to go. And I'd be like trying to change their ticket to stay longer. Yeah. And only a handful of people ever took me up on it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you every time I hang out with you, I feel like we should start a reptile hippie commune or something and just all live together and hang out with reptiles and like go flip over rocks in the dirt and stuff for the rest yeah. of the life. You, but it's not just you even, it's like your kids and your wife and everybody. It's just like, these are my people, Yeah, you know? I still want, like, I've got a bunch of kids that, like, you know, like, their gender is opposite of yours. I f I feel like we should just make them all marry each other. Let's <laughs> just would, arrange wouldn't, it. Wouldn't be weird at all. No, but, I mean, do you care? <laughs> Not really. It would, it would be weird, but it would also be pretty stinking epic. You know <laughs> what I mean? So all my girls would be hus Cuscos. All the, your your uh, girls can be Hartles oh, yeah, now. Oh, yeah, there's a movie that Hillary really likes to watch. Um, it's an old, like, 60s or 50s movie. Um, like Seven Wives for Seven Brothers or something. That's a good movie. Yeah. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Except they just rode into town and kidnapped all their wives. <laughs> And then the wives were okay with it in the end. And the funny thing is, I should be quiet for this part because Thomas is on the other side of the wall. 
I've been coaching Thomas and his love life. If you guys don't know who Thomas is, you can watch the vlog channel. He's all in there. We haven't addressed his love life yet. But all of my advice is basically, it makes me sound like I'm one of the brothers from that movie. I'm like, bro, she totally wants to be kidnapped. Just go take her. Go get it. And, and he's like, are you sure? And I'm like, totally. <laughs> and it's like, I listen to myself and I'm like, this is the worst, most chauvinistic, terrible advice I've ever heard. And it's coming out of my mouth. And then the other part of the equation is, I, I actually think it'll work. Oh, yeah. No, it generally <laughs> does. It generally it's, does. If that movie was real life, it would actually work, which Dude. is why it's such a classic movie. Because they, they <laughs> like as a guy, you're like, those stupid women, what are they thinking? And as a woman, they watch it and they're like, that's so romantic. He kidnapped uh, her. I mean, She's the one for him out of the whole town. Plenty of her. women out there, dude. Plenty of women out there just really appreciate a strong man who takes charge. That's just a fact. That's what I'm talking about. And so I think the thing, like, Thomas is learning how to be a little bit more alpha. He's a little bit too beta right now. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Did you? Oh, yeah, you were the one. That... <laughs> That's right. Didn't you? Like, I... Okay, we got to recall this because I won't get the details right. But he was like leaving a message with you, or I think I stole his phone and texted you back. And you were like, Whoa, Thomas, all of a sudden you sound like an alpha male because I stole his phone and texted you. Wasn't it something like that? Uh, I don't know. I thought you were going to bring up time at MJ's party where I told him I would. No, that's a different ass. time. <laughs> Where you told him what? <laughs> I told him I, would, I, I don't remember exactly what I said. Oh, talk about my kids again and I'll beat your ass. Yeah, that's something what you like, said. Something like he, that. he didn't even say anything bad about your kids. You just were. It was just the, it was the it was the way he it was the way he said it. It was something. In the, it was like uh it was it was uh oh how does it feel to be because I was talking about how, you know how I you don't like to be away from my family for very long you know like that's yeah. why I don't go on this long trip. And he's like oh how does it feel to be whooped by your kids. Yes, I like, yes. I, I was yeah. like, I was like, I'll whoop, I'll whoop your fucking ass right now. Do you I'll say something you. like that again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. And you know what's funny is, and like, he looked at me was... and he said, oh, I, "I believe it." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm sorry." <laughs> <laughs> what's funny is that was him like trying to to be like that. You know what I mean? Like uh, Thomas that's is not... great, dude. Thomas is. Oh, he is a great person. Yeah. yeah. I I thought I've I've said this to him plenty of times, and and to you guys while you're together is like I I, can't, think he fits I can't in. talk about him. Thomas, we're talking about you on the podcast. You're going to have to listen to it later. <laughs> He's the one that gave us the idea for what is the most sexual tree. Right, right, right. I no, can't I just, hear you. I've, I've always, I just think he fits in real well. Like I've always, when he comes along on the, on the trips, I'm always glad that he's there because we have, we have great conversations and um, mm. he, uh, I think he brings a lot to the, the table to like, I think you, you scored with getting Thomas on the team. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, he's amazing. Yeah. Speaking of which he is going to come with me to Pomona. So we'll Sweet. see you guys in January. Awesome. So, I mean, he's been on a couple of podcasts, not on the podcast, but like sleeping in the bed next to us as we <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'll happen in January. <laughs> yeah. No, Thomas is, I, I love Thomas. He's yeah. Great. He's great. man. He's, he's fantastic. Yeah. That's why I, that's why I hired him. I didn't even know that he was good. Someone told me he did videos. You know, he's from Nebraska and I met I him in Nebraska. Okay. Yeah. So I, someone told me he did videos and I was like, I'll pay for a plane ticket to come hang out. <laughs> well, we'll make a video too while we're at it or something. And then it, it would just, I, I, we just clicked. It was great. He's good people. I like surrounded myself with good people. So I hired him. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It was cool. It was cool. It's awesome. So I, I have a lot of people like that. Do you know I, I hired two people Hadley. in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, Hadley is one. Tim is the other. So it's great. Yeah, Tim is um, actually my, my connection is like a good buddy of mine is his older brother. And I love him. His name's Steve. And Steve was like, yeah, I got a younger brother. And his parents are like, you can walk out of our front door of our business and if you just walk straight you'll run into his parents house so i was like dude steve's brother lives there and he's looking for a job and he happens to like reptiles yes please so he came over Ugh, dude great hire he's only worked for us for like three four days now or something like that 
but he's like roll up the sleeves and dive in that's great nice. that is so good. he's helping rob just kind of do dishes and scrub and grunge work and i i'm i'm like a blue collar boy at heart so i i respect that kind of work ethic and he's got it i have not seen that in this generation very much mm. so that's refreshing so i really like him and then hadley you know it's funny we we're i was talking with hadley about it and i was like you know honestly you were kind of my original employee she didn't do a lot for me, but she wrote a bunch of stuff for me many years ago. So yeah, I remember before that. Kim worked for me, before Aiden worked for me, Hadley had, we did it like, she was like a contract worker, you know, like I just pay her X amount of dollars for this piece of work or whatever right. that she did. But she's a wildlife biologist. Yeah. She started writing I remember when you had her on uh, one of the Talk Em Up Tuesdays. Do you remember that deer sucking on my head the whole time? That was the that was the talk about Tuesday. We were sitting in a deer pen at the Pittsburgh Zoo, and she was a zookeeper there at the time. So right now she works at the uh, the aviary here because we have a separate aviary from the zoo here in Pittsburgh. It's the National Aviary, and then we have um, that's just you know little flex. We have the National Aviary here, hey. and then uh, yeah, and dinosaurs. Then, uh, <laughs> We have those too. So she works at the Carnegie Science Center as well. Oh, nice. So she does a lot of educational stuff and That's everything sweet. like that. Yeah, she's really she's a really good person. So I'm I'm super stoked because the last time she was here, I was I, I kind of like was talking to her late, like after the work day was ended and she's packing up to go home. And I was like, What do you want out of life? What are you doing? And she told me kind of all the stuff that's going on. And I was like, Okay. I think I would make that happen. You should hang out here more often. And she's like, yeah, okay. So I think, I think I've got her pegged down too, which is pretty exciting. Cause I mean, Kim is exactly that way. Remember when we did the interview for your channel mm -hmm. and we just, you were like, I said that I should interview her on your channel, which was super weird. I don't even think it worked. You probably got no views, but it was very fun for me. And uh, yeah, ever since then she's worked for me. Cause I was like, this is a cool person. Let's yeah. work together. Yeah. You know, that was, that I was have to pay I, for I my friends. It. That's the, that's the moral of the story. I have to pay for my friends. <laughs> Otherwise they don't come hang around. Oh my gosh. Oh, yep. Yep. You're like a fine Chesterfield couch. I'm going <laughs> to import you from England, Nebraska, New Mexico, wherever you're from. And I'm going to sit on you here at reach out reptile. <laughs> That's, I guess that's the way it goes. I don't know. That's ridiculous, dude. But it's also sounds like it's pretty true. I, uh, yeah. I you asked me about a pet. I don't mm. think I have anything since last month. I think I don't get animals every month. So yeah. yeah. Well, that's, but that's not that's not what I meant. I didn't mean new pet. I just meant like kind of. If you're like me, like I get excited in waves about my oh, animals. Dude, I'm super excited about some of the clutches that are going to be hatching out here. But I've got a couple of gravid females okay. that are going to like, I'm just super stoked about because I always wanted to get like a, a a really cool snake from Justin Kabilka for a long time. And I was just kind of like waiting for a long time to pull the trigger on it. And I, I want to get go the out, right one and everything. Yeah, get the right one and go out maybe even go out there in person it just didn't work out at the time to go out in person and get it when i was ready to like pull the trigger on it and found the one that i wanted yeah but but that that mail that i got from him has uh gotten... remind me what mail it is i watched the video but i forget the mail mm -hmm. yeah because i didn't even say it people were pretty pissed they're like why did you not say what it is and that, that's probably I made everybody I guess it. yeah. uh it's a it's a g <laughs> I, I should know without looking it's a enchi red stripe spot nose ghi clown Wow, Man. that's a heck. That's all my favorite genes. Yeah, well, me too. That's why I was the, <laughs> yeah. the really the only thing it was missing. Was I don't know yellow. if it goes well together. I can't even imagine it. But you individually it, said like all my favorite genes. It, my it does. And the, the GHI gets gets ruled out a little bit with the with the Enchi, I think. But it's that's okay because it, that it's in there. And sure. so the yeah, there's combos you make these kind and those kind. Right. Yeah, I got and you. then then the he's, there's two different females that he's gotten gravid. Um, and that's a cinnamon lesser het clown. And I think okay. that's going to be really cool, um, especially with the spot nose and lesser. Cinnamon lesser pastel is probably one of my favorite looks. Just mm. it's a simple combo. But anyways, go ahead. And then the other female is a, a yellow belly pinstripe extreme jean het clown. So Can't looking to, the one thing that was missing from that male that I would have really liked to get in him, which he, he didn't have. I think he had one, but he was 
holding it back. And that Leopard. was the, that was the yellow belly. No, yellow. Belly. Oh, I was close. No, no that's but not but that female anyway. is yellow belly. She's yellow belly pinstripe. So it's gonna you know so you can potential make one. For, yes potential for to, to be able to make one and uh, that's gonna be probably the coolest clown clutch that I'll have hatched out to date um, from that female in particular from the yellow belly pinstripe. So I'm just I'm pretty I'm pumped the fact that she's like I mean she's just gravid. She's loaded with eggs. I love it and. I'm great. super stoked on this this clutch that's going to come out, dude. I, I, I can't wait. Do you want a, a little tidbit of history that I watched happen firsthand? We were talking about the Ben and Lindley trial and all that kind of stuff, but yeah. how ridiculous that was. But um, Ben Rennick was a good, uh, good buddy of mine from going way back. And uh, he thought that the spot nose gene was like the coolest gene since sliced bread. And when I worked at Prehistoric Pets, this would have been about uh, maybe 12-ish years ago, um, was the year when he really produced a lot of spot nose combos. And sp he was ahead of his time because spot nose is a subtle gene, but it does some very, very cool things, obviously, especially in clown, right? Um, but there was no spot nose clown back then or anything. So he made a bunch of spot nose. They look beautiful. He priced them really high. And some spot nose are like, junky or whatever like they, they don't look that good ben's were top notch i bought three spot nose males from him that year because we were geeking out over how cool they were to bring back to prehistoric and breed into the population they were the best spot nose i'd seen and he loved them so much he was saying garrett thank you for caring about spot nose nobody does they went from like 1500 bucks down to like 200 dollars because we made a bunch of, of them and everyone's like ah. Eh, that ain't that cool. I want a spider back then, right? And uh, that spider's cooler. And he was so disappointed in the market that he was like, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm going to keep them all. So he kept like 400 spot nose females and they were all grown up and like right, just starting to like really produce well before he died. And I, I wonder, because I feel like Justin Kabilka picked up that torch and carried spot nose to where it should be because they're worth more than that today, 13 years later. Clowns are the same way because somebody picked up the torch and championed that cause. Yeah, I, so he certainly. This was that. just a fun behind the scenes thing that conversation that I had with Ben a long time ago is it was how amazing spot nose was going to be. Yeah. So it's, I, it's one of my favorite genes to this day because of that in ball pythons yeah i i didn't get to know him too well but i did get to have him on triple b tv one time um mm. and so and he just seemed to be and i looked up to what he was doing like i when i watched his videos in his facility like i was like dude this is he like did it right clean he, did it, he right. did it right like the i got a few snakes from him and like the way that the snakes arrived and just like all the uh the uh i think i got my tape idea from him i think he had the custom tape on, on yes the, he uh, did on the box and he yeah. did the he always would box with the little white fluff that that micro fiber mm. floss stuff yeah you know and i just really super enjoyed. nice boxing and a super so, nice guy super you like i just love talking to him he just seems so goes like without saying yeah. super smart too yeah but uh, i'll tell you what he was a big inspiration for, for me, because when I would talk with him, I just was like, this guy has a level of business understanding and, and uh, quality, you know, workmanship in the reptile industry that nobody, nobody else does. So <clears throat> I knew I could never, he was like super edgy, clean, professional, on point with everything. Like I said, I remember from 13 years ago, unboxing snakes for him. I'm like, wow. Look, he, he silk screens his logo on the bags and he puts them in this, that white fluffy stuff. Uh, now a lot of people do it. He was the, the OG on that one. So I always remembered the boxing experience, talking to him, the quality obviously was into his animals. And, and uh, you know, we joke around, my style is like crappy chic, right? So it was like, but I was inspired by Ben. I was like, you know, I want to really have like a defined look and feel to my business, my cause, everything I want to do all the way down to the couch that we sit on or whatever, when you come to reach our reptiles, right? That all probably came from Ben 
except I knew I could never hit his like sharp, clean professionalism. I have to like, you know, half-assed for that. <laughs> so we're, we're going to redefine my look out of pallet wood instead of mahogany, you know what I mean? Or whatever. And that's, that's kind of how I became who I, I, he was really a big inspiration in that. Yeah. He, but, he was a big in, inspiration for me too, man. Like when, like I said, I, I looked up to what he did. I was like, I want to be, I want to be like that. Like, I want to have that level of like, and like you said, not even, I don't think it was attainable. He's way too smart. Like he's way, way smarter than I could ever hope to be. I oh think. yeah, me too. Me um, too. But just like, just to have that, that level of, of care, like, like attention to detail and like, like thought. It's like, creativity is what it is. You're yeah. not doing things like everyone else. You're doing things the way that you're best at. That's right. what it was with him. Yeah. Yeah. There you and go. you've nailed it on YouTube. That's, that's why everyone knows you as a YouTuber out of all the things you do. You do that on your YouTube channel, your vlog, especially, you know, where you, the way you bring the production, I talk about easier ways to do that and business things and stuff like that. But the, the level that you put into that shows, and that's, that's Rennick stuff. That's Rennick level stuff, what you do on your YouTube channel. So thanks. Uh, my cool thing I'm excited about right now. I don't even have it yet. All right. But my, my daughter, Kira, is getting a Sphinx cat from me for Christmas. Oh, crazy. Those things look wild. They're so hard to find. Oh, mm. I mean, not really, but like <clears throat> they have health issues. Mm. So they're kind of like the super dwarves. Like if you get it from the wrong place, it's probably not what you really wanted. You're going to have a bad experience. So they, not that they have health issues, but the breed has inherent issues that it can have that if you're educated you can avoid so i have been hunting and hunting and hunting and i finally found a breeder it's probably the only breeder here in pittsburgh that i would trust and we they've got kittens ready to go i was going to get this christmas present for kira and all this we we're all excited i made the stupid stupid mistake of telling my daughter because it wouldn't be ready by december 25th mm. but it was going to come like two weeks later so I said, just so you know, you were getting probably the coolest Christmas present ever this year, but it won't be here in time for Christmas because it's not ready to leave mom yet. The breeder decided to hold back the cat that we were going to get. Yeah, crushed her. So it's not that I'm just looking for any Sphinx. It's kind of like, you know, I mean, you know me, I'm a little bit obsessive. I need like yeah. a really... I why did a good do, one. Why did they do that? Because they wanted to kill a little girl's soul. That's why. <laughs> oh my god. No, I mean it was a great cat. What do you do? You know, I mean, like the only thing I was disappointed in is they didn't offer me anything. You know mm. what I mean? Like, hey, we'll get you one out of the next litter, or I have yeah. to rescue one, or something. Something. Yeah. So it was a bummer, but because of it i was like that that was my easy search here's a nice breeder they test for all the health, health issues make sure they don't have them that's my number one priority i don't care if it's a boy girl color she can she can pick all that i want her to pick her kitten you know if you know kira and i know you do but a lot of breeders or, or listeners rather probably don't know her she is like as much as i am passionate about animals i feel like she's a hundred times more intense like she's insane for her whole life. You can go back to the earliest videos on my channel, watch her when she was like five. Remember when Dave did the iguana oh, fest yeah, absolutely. Thing with her? Oh, she had 40 adults in a crowd crying when she started talking about conservation of rhino iguanas. They were like, oh, you know, and Dave was ready to beat someone up that was bringing a drone over because he's like, you're destroying my audio and she's getting so good. <laughs> so anyway. I went on this nationwide hunt for Sphinx and I may have been so pissed off about missing out on the first Sphinx that I, I upped the game a little bit to make sure that it happened. So I finally got concert conver, uh, confirmation. confirmation. Thank you. Back from the breeder that they're going to have a cat for us. I just won't know anything for about two weeks. So hopefully by our next podcast, you can ask me about the Sphinx and we'll have had it, have it sorted. Right. And it's going to be pretty, epic. I mean, if you know anything about Sphinx, they're not inexpensive. It's a very expensive breed. 
I've uh, never looked into the pricing, but it doesn't look like something that I, I can imagine that it would be something like that. Yeah. So like if you get them from like the garbage backyard breeder, you're probably still going to pay a thousand bucks for a cat. And like, I'm of the old school mindset that you should never pay for a cat. Cats will just come to you at your house if you leave milk out on the back porch. So you shouldn't pay for an animal like that. But anyway, yeah, fair enough. A uh, thousand bucks for a garbage sphinx. The really nice ones, they go way, way up. We're not trying to show or anything like that. So I'm not too worried about that. I just want her to pick a good, healthy pet. And I'm sure it'll be a part of like our vlog channel and stuff like that because they're very attention seeking. And when she goes to school, I plan to bring it to work, let it run around here at the shop, stuff like that. I mean, Sphinx cats, for some reason, there's a bunch of people that are into them in the reptile industry. Hmm. They seem to go hand in hand because they're kind of like that freakishly looking animal like, that some like people like hate it. Almost exotic. Super exotic, but in a way that like it, it causes people to hate it. So <laughs> yeah, it's like I've a seen snake. that like, because it's so hairless and like <clears throat> odd looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can be exotic like a, an orangutan or a panda and everyone loves you. But if you're exotic like a sphinx, everyone's like, Ugh! and you're like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> I you have to that. look at their soul, man. If you can't see past the skin, you're a douchebag. And that's why I pay two thousand, five thousand, whatever dollars for my cat, because you can't look at the surface. This cat's got soul. And the truth of the matter is every cat is going to be just as good at that. But for me, the no hair thing is a is a big advantage for okay. the, our lifestyle you know, our, sure. I have allergies stuff. Oh like yeah. That, yeah. So. Oh, absolutely. That makes, that and makes I, and I know before everyone freaks out and says, Hey, they're not hypoallergenic or whatever. Like they don't leave hair everywhere. So that's what I'm going. Yeah. For. Well, that's where you get the reaction from is that they lick their dander. The dander is where the allergy generally is triggered from. So if they're yeah. not leaving hair, it's like the, the place, saliva then. and stuff. Yeah. Like the that. saliva that come from licking their fur and then. Right. Yeah, so totally. I'm okay being allergic to a cat. I don't want to be allergic to my couch and my bed and my pillow <laughs> totally, everywhere that cat totally, has ever totally, been. Totally, totally. Yeah, I get it. So, but she's super stoked on it. Kira is so funny because she's just like me. Like, do you know her dream pet, Kira? Like, uh, her dream, dream pet? I, I yeah, feel you like can get. Told me, Try to I, guess. No, no. It's totally no. outside of my realm. It's not like dad made her do this. That's the best part. Oh, wait, wait. Is it like, like a um like a pygmy elephant or something like that? Or pygmy Ooh, no, but that would be totally me <laughs> <laughs> from Borneo. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, I, I'm sure she would love that. No, her dream pet is a deep sea isopod. Oh, that's she right. Loves that's right. Yeah, you told me about this last last month. That's right. Wow, I have horrible memory, but yeah, they get like a foot long so it's yeah. basically a giant well, the problem would be pole. keeping them in like i think it, you'd have to have a high highly pressurized uh you know because they're deep deep sea obviously I, I imagine you would need to have some kind of highly pressurized enclosure that's how i imagine that would work maybe i don't know though i don't, I don't know i, I do know to know someone who has successfully kept coelacanths that are another they theorized had to be deep sea yeah, But it was a weird situation where they got this coelacanth. I'm going to be super vague here because sure. this, this story is so unbelievable that I'm tired of defending it. But anyway, they got a, a coelacanth in and this was before they knew that. So for those listening, coelacanths are like, they used to consider them like, oh, this is a missing link between a fish and an amphibian. They have like little legs they run around on. Turns out they're nothing like that. They're actually a deep sea fish. They're alive today. They were supposed to have died out long before frogs yeah. <laughs> were, were invented. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or whatever. But, um, but they're still alive today. And no one knew that they were live birth. But there was a guy who got a, a coelacanth and they got it live. Um, you're just going to have to make the enchiladas. Bye, okay. Hillary. Say, say uh, Garrett said hi. Yeah, yeah. Here, 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 uh, Garrett says hi and bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> she says she she misses you, and the kids say they miss you too. Hopefully, they're coming up to Mona. Yeah. Uh, well, I know my parents are, and hopefully, they'll come down too. Yeah, as well. That would be great because her yeah. folks are down there. So hopefully, we can make that work. Dude, me uh, and your dad which, are like this. She, <laughs> speaking of which, <laughs> she's she's leaving for work right now, so I I probably have to go upstairs to make sure that the house doesn't. Uh, get well, finish, out, like, kids and I'll finish the coelacanth thing. It popped okay. out a bunch of pups 
and they survived for a long time. No longer than anyone else has managed to keep coelacanths alive. Awesome. So maybe you can do the same thing with, uh, maybe you can get like a bunch of deep sea isopod eggs or something and bring them up and then cultivate them. I don't know. Kira would be the one to do it for sure. Yeah. Sounds epic. So, yeah. Well. Hmm. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, Merry Christmas. I'm looking forward to seeing you on uh, the next one in person. That would be great. Yeah, it probably doesn't. I mean, if we do it, um, it's going to be late. It's going to be after the 17th. Yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll, it'll be. But I think it, it will be good to do it along a show. You yeah, know, we'll have. Just like this one. It's going to be closer like this one. Like this one, I'm literally going to go upstairs, get it pieced together mm-hmm. with the music in the front, and then uh, upload it because it's today's the day. <laughs> All right, folks. So our next one will be a few days late because we usually release on the 17th for some obscure reason. And I think it'll be like something like the 22nd or something. Yeah, it'll be like a week, it'll be a week it. after. Yeah. yeah. And then you are going to have to come visit us in Pittsburgh for the following episode. I think it's time. I think we can make that work. Yeah. All right. I'll location sponsor it. We'll pay right. for it. Freaking sweet. I got to pay for my friends. <laughs> All right, right. buddy. Well, I love you, man. It was good talking to you. It's been too long. I know. Kiss the family for me. And uh, hey, everybody listening, both of you, we love you too, too. (laughs) Later. Searchable as a reptile.